Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video, and today we're going to be going over Gideon the Oathsworn. So as we're winding down the end of War of the Spark Standard, I always tend to go in and check out those super cool Planeswalker decks that uh, Magic, uh, that Wizards always puts out for new players. They are decks designed to introduce players to the game. So, I mean, if you follow the track, really, you're supposed to go in and get a welcome deck, which is coming up in the following weekend, which I intend to take my kids to because I love the welcome decks. Uh, <laughs> they're full of... Uh, common and uncommon cards that are basically garbage, but if they destroy them on the dining room table, I'm not too hurt by it. But the logical next step following that is one of these. And in this case, we're going to be going over the Gideon's Planeswalker deck. And lucky enough for us arena players, you also get, it's not going to matter because I already put in the code, one of these, a little code that allows you to bring all of the contents of the deck into Arena. Now, the only thing I do wish it did, I wish it gave you two packs like the Planeswalker deck does. However, that's neither here nor there. So tonight we're going to kind of go over the first of the two uh, of the Planeswalker decks. And if you're new to the series, how I do this, I'll play both on the channel, showing the merits of each. And then my son and I will hop on and we'll play against each other and see which one of the two are the better of the two and of best of five battle to the death. So you have that to look forward to. So in this one, we're going to go over Gideon's deck. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. That's mostly just for fun. He and I love doing them. They're just oodles of fun. I love playing Magic. So these are decks that we not only play at home on the kitchen table, but we also play on Arena against each other. So this one I was actually really impressed with, with a lot of the cards in this uh, this set. There's a lot of standards uh, staples in this deck. I was really surprised by the contents of it. So Charm Stray is a, a really good one, and you get four copies of it. Um, again, it is a 1-1 one, one with lifelink for one mana, and every time another Charm Cat comes in with the same name, it gets an additional plus one, plus one counter. So ideally, you'd have a couple of these in play, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger, and they're lifelink. Uh, to build off of the lifelink, you get the new Ajani's Pride Mate. Makes me angry that I went out and traded wild cards in for these, because darn it, you get three of them. But it is what it is. Um, Ajani's Pride Mates, if you don't know, is a 2-2 two -two creature that whenever you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on, two t on this creature. Uh, it is uh, one of your win conditions because they get really big really fast. Desperate Lunge, uh, another cool card. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying until return. You also gain two life. Again, triggering off a of Johnny Pride Mate's uh, ability. You have a War Shrieker. It's it's a common, it's a 1-3 flying bird, and if you get late in the game, you can spend 6 mana and tap it, and give each one of your creatures a plus 1 plus 1 token. So you will find cards in here that are kind of garbage, but they are designed for new players. kind of gives them an idea of the mechanics of the game. So this is obviously kind of going in for uh, teaching the players flying, and some of the, what to do with the extra mana as you get later in the game. Uh, Vampire or, or, Pernu, or, or hmm. How do I write? Opportunist? Opportunist. That's the word. Couldn't wrap my mouth around that. Vampire Opportunist is a 2-1, uh, and if you spend 7 mana, each opponent loses 2 life and gains 2 life. <laughs> I like the artwork. <laughs> That's kind of cool, but beyond that, me. Three Cruel Celebrants. Now, you're seeing a ton of these in standard play right now, especially for the Orzhov decks um, and some of the Rakdos decks, too, with tossing these in. They're trying to go for that Mardu uh, color scheme where they're sacrificing creatures and gaining life. So this one's actually really cool. And again, playing off the ability of being able to have a Johnny's Pride made in there to gain life on those. Makeshift Battalion is a 3-2. Uh, when it, when you attack with at least two other creatures and it, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, it's okay. Um, Trusted Pegasus, I feel like we've seen this ability before, but is a 2-2 flying whenever it attacks target creature without flying, gains flying until end of turn. Uh, Nix's Cruelty is a great little removal spell. A target creature gets minus 5, minus 5 in the end of turn, so that gets around things like Indestructible because it literally drops its uh, toughness down to zero. So things like, um, well, I guess right now we're, we're in the end of War of the Spark Standard, so like Aggressive Van... Um, Adonated, uh, adointed vanguards um, are really, really popular right now. That gets around those abilities to, to do that. And then you exile them instead of putting them into the graveyard. Oath of Kaya, you get a full uh, a rare Oath of Kaya in this one. So not only do you get um, all the stuff that you've seen so far, but you get another rare Oath of Kaya whenever it comes, enters the battlefield. You deal three damage to a, to any target, and then you gain three life. And when an opponent or planeswalker you control uh, with one more creature, Oath of Kaya deals two damage to that player, and you gain two life. Um, Gideon's Battle Cry. This is the so each planeswalker deck comes with planeswalker deck only cards. These are the two rares that come out, and these are specifically for it. And they usually are designed because you only get one planeswalker in the deck to find some way of fishing for that planeswalker. This is that one. So put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, which is pretty good. Um, and that's permanent, not until end of turn. 
And then you can search your library or graveyard for a card named Gideon the Oathsworn, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. So even if Gideon ends up dying, it gives you another way to pull it back into your hand. Gideon's Company is the <laughs> Johnny's Primate Plus. Uh, I happen to like a Johnny's Primates better because they are two casting costs. They're out on turn two. So ideally, you've got a Life Linker in, pl in play, like the Charm Stray. A Johnny's Primates already up to 3-3. Three, three. By the time this comes out, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Eh, maybe. Uh, you can spend four mana to put a counter on target Gideon Planeswalker. So that is any Gideon's Planeswalker, but really it's there for the Johnny's Pride Mate ability. Bond of Discipline I've used quite a few times. It is a sleep for white. Uh, tap all creatures your opponent controls. Uh, creatures you control gain lifelink into end of turn. Again, making Johnny's Pride Mates bigger. You see the theme kind of going. Uh, the Enforcer Griffin, 3-4 Flyer for 5. Again, this is kind of just introducing. It's a bigger creature, good defensive abilities, um, but again, it's a little pricey for just the flying that it does. And then you have, of course, the Gideon, the Osworn himself. He's an okay um, Planeswalker. Uh, you will find that uh, most of the Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers come in at 6 casting costs, and they're meh at best. Now, that being said, the uh, M21 is the Ajani's one. I'm really looking forward to playing that one because that Ajani is actually pretty good. Um, but this one, let's go ahead and give Gideon his due. He's a forecast cat of uh, four uh, loyalty mana or four loyalty planeswalker with six mana cost. Uh, he does have a static ability. Uh, whenever you attack with two or more creatures, each creature put a plus one plus one counter on those creature. Kind of okay. Uh, he has a plus two, which uh, until end of turn, getting the Oceanworm becomes a five five white soldier creature that is still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him. So his uh, equivalent in War of the Spark says it's indestructible, meaning it can't be, can't die through any means whatsoever. So this one just prevents all damage. You can kind of see the difference between the three casting cost Gideon and the six. Um, his nine's pretty good. It's a it's a one-sided board wipe if you get there. For minus nine, you can exile Gideon, the Osworn, and each creature your opponent controls. That's kind of like your end game winner. Um, I don't know how often you're going to be able to pull that off. We'll find out. We'll try. Uh, you do get another Command of the Dreadhorde. Command of the Dreadhorde is a really good card. You see quite a bit of it. Um, choose any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers in graveyards. Command of the Dreadhorde deals damage to you equal to the total command and mana cost of those cards, and you can put them into the battlefield under your control. So it's not just you, that is your opponent as well. And then you get a Kaya on top of that. Uh, opponent um, permanence that you can, your opponent controls with Hexroof can now be the targets of that. So uh, right now we're living in a meta where things like Carnage Tyrant still exist in the meta. There are other Hexproof... Um, um, creatures out there, but that's kind of the big one. And for a minus three, she can exile a target creature. Um, mana base, pretty straightforward. You get a whole bunch of different land art, uh, which I thought was kind of cool that they actually uh, translated that into War of the Spark, into Arena as well. So you get Swamps and Plains, of course, and then you end up with four of the Orzhov Guildgates. So we're going to go ahead and play a couple of games of this just to give you an idea of how this plays. Now, my hope... It is my hope, upon hope, that somehow, some way, the, uh, yeah, you have to come down here to the, <laughs> you have to get down into the pre-generated decks down here. I have all of them on this side. Again, my son and I kind of split them up, but, so, uh, my hope upon hope is that the, the algorithm that matches you against players won't put me up against top rated meta decks. That would be nice if that didn't happen, um, because it is designed to be a new player's deck. Now, I think the problem that I have is as much as I play Arena, I think my win-loss record's probably going to affect that. But we'll see. Um, I have played against some of the, the starter decks that come out of Arena in this, which those are pretty good matchups. I've actually played other Planeswalker decks. I have seen them in Arena. I swear to you, I'm not the only one playing them. But this is right here. I mean, all in all, when you think about it, these Planeswalker books are a fantastic introduction to the game. Because not only does it say, hey, go out and play Arena if you use this card, gives you a free deck. You play through, and I'm currently doing uh, on my Saturday sh uh, shows, um, doing a, play uh, a playthrough of the beginning tutorial. It's a really great way to introduce players to Arena and Magic all together. So you get the Paper Magic on the table to take that to, well, I don't know if I would take that to Friday Night Magic, but you can at least play some games with it with some of the folks there and kind of get learn how to play the game. But then it also we steers you directly into Arena as well. Jip Master, I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. I've had some success with these Planeswalker decks. Ugh, none of my one drops that I would have been hoping for, but okay. Love the artwork on that swamp. Love the artwork on that swamp. 
I have a, uh, with all the stuff I'm seeing from Core 20, I have a mono black aggro deck with that 7 6 zombie <laughs> dinosaur that I think is going to be oodles of fun. Um, yeah, to drop a 7 6 for three, like, yeah, I'm discarding a card, but if I'd done anything correctly, I don't have any cards in my hand at the moment anyway. And my opponent is taking his time. So it looks like I'm going to go Opportunist into Oath of Kaya into Gideon's Company, maybe? We'll see. Let's see what my opponent's playing. I'll know right away, because if I get, like, Thought Erasured on turn two, this is probably over. Or if I see Mono Red Burn. Oh, no. Okay, so we're not dead. And we got a one drop. Look at that. We'll say hello. And I've seen the new one. The new thing for the kids are doing nowadays to keep up is the hello, good game kind of thing. Be a good sport when you play Magic. Ooh. I wonder... Well, no, he's got the he's got one rare. I wonder if this is the Merfolk deck. The Merfolk deck is by far one of the better... Yeah, see what I do? I called it. Is one of the better um, decks that you get for free from Arena. Haha. I will swing away with my kitty cat. My suspicion is he's not going to be willing to trade. Oh, look at that. He will. Works for me. So I'm probably going to go with the Opportunist next. Maybe the Oath of Kaya, depending on when he drops. I might go Oath of Kaya. Yeah, considering how much he's... He's going to keep building up that speaker, so let's let's uh, ruin his hopes and dreams right here. Nope, I'll hold. On the next turn, I think I might go Desperate Lunge on the Charmed, charmed Ray as I go in. Ah, he's going to tap down my kitty cat. So much for that plan. Okay, so we're going to go the Opportunist. Ooh, Kamena. He's got enough Merfolk on the board to make this a little bit difficult for us. Uh, we'll drop the Guild Gate. I can't quite kill Kumena. So, like, I would have gone in with the Cat. But I think I'm going to hold in the meantime. So if he's smart, he'll tap down all of his creatures on this turn here and draw and use Kamina's ability to draw a card. What do I have in my grave? I just have a cat? What has he got? He's got a couple of merfolk. Ah, oh, that again. How many of these you got? I think there's two in the deck, <laughs> for the record. Yeah, this this deck is a little bit painful. Okay, so I think I'm going to go for a combat trick. Let's see what happens when I attack with the old Charm Stray. Um, no. I take that back. Do I have the mana for it? One, two, three, four. I do not. I need one more mana to be able to pull off her ability. He's going to start making his Merfolk really big. And I don't think this deck has anything to handle that. He could have tapped, uh, he could have tapped himself and gotten the plus one, plus one counters. That's really what he should have done. <sighs> so many merfolk. Now that doesn't do him any good. He can only have one of those in play at a time, so he's going to pitch that. Hoo-hoo! If I can command the Dreadhorde, I can pull that out on my own and then pull his own Merfolk out of the graveyard. That would be actually really funny. No, I'm good.
He should be giving himself plus one, plus one tokens at this point. So I'll be looking at three, four, five, six, seven damage to myself to pull all of that out of the graveyard. But that'll give me some card draw ability. My hope is that he swings and attacks that I can kill another one or two of his merfolk so that I can actually start using his ability to start using his deck against him. That's really what I'm hoping to do. Merfolk Mistbinder. Yeah, that's good. So my guess he's going to swing here. No? I'm really surprised by that. Sure, why not? Makes me a little bit more difficult to deal with. I'm waiting for the big swing here. He's probably got a sleep in hand and he's just waiting till he has enough life to kill me. If I know this deck like I do, it'd be so nice to command the Dread Horde. Ah, that's where it is. There's nothing you can do at this point. Yeah, the Merfolk deck, it is a good deck. As I say, I don't know that I survived this initial attack. Yep, nope, that's going to do it. <sighs> no removal. That is probably something I would change about this deck, would be put some removal in it at least. I saw a path there, like if he had come in earlier, I saw a path. That was what he was doing though. He was holding back until he had enough that he knew he could kill me, and then he was going to put my creatures to sleep. He probably had that in his opening hand, would be my guess. Again, what is up with me not getting... That's kind of frustrating. Um, let's go ahead and mulligan that one. I don't like the idea of going that slow. That's a little bit better. Yeah, see, there we go. Yes, absolutely. Two of Johnny's Pride Mates in the ter first three turns? Absolutely. We'll see how this goes. Charm, Stray, Kitty Cat. Do the cool king thing, kids. Hello, good game. Ooh, and a Johnny's welcome. This should be interesting. I got my Johnny's out before you did. And I have a way to kill yours if it gets out. Which it does. So yeah, we have no other choice but to... Oof. We're going to hold. I need to be able to kill his Ajani's. My only hope is that he doesn't get too big. Ooh, this is a vampire life gain deck. That's cool. All right, don't cast another creature. Don't cast another creature. Woohoo! He didn't cast another creature. Yeah, I was going to say, my assumption would be he would not be going after that. Gideon's Company. Cool card. I've got one of those, too. Really wishing I hadn't given up the old... Uh... Oh, combat trick.
Hit him with seven and gain more life. And now my Johnny's a six six. Another Gideon's company. Gideon, yeah, see, I'm surprised. This is actually doing really well. I feel like I need to hold this for when it comes in. Ooh, what to do on this? Yeah, I think I'm gonna hold. I've got enough life over him. Ah, oh, I should have gone in for the attack. Boo! That's a shame. Attack with all. At least I kill his vampire synergy with that. disappointed in myself there. Oh, on Sarah's wings. Now we're in some trouble. That is vigilance and there is nothing we can do about that. So we're not getting beat by what I would consider like super hardcore meta decks. We're just getting beat by good decks. This is well, good, good casual decks. How's that sound? <laughs> Holy cow! Good game on the Flying Gideon's Company. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I will give them that. All right, we have to get a win. One win with a Planeswalker deck. That's kind of our rule here. We got to get at least one win with a Planeswalker deck. Unedited Planeswalker deck. Neo DM. Hmm. All right, we've got some answers here. We got our own Gideon's Company, which would be nice. I'm surprised they didn't do a, a Johnny's Welcome in this deck, to be honest with you. A lot of this just looks like War. Of the, like there are some uh, cards from other sets, but a lot of this is War of the Spark. Sure. Oh, 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 I didn't put down my planes. No. I meant to get Cruel Celebrant out. That's disappointing. Ooh, resplendent. So if I'd have gotten Cruel Celebrant out, I'd be getting credit for this. However, because I'm stupid, I missed the chance there. I do have a ton of removal here, so this might work for us. Probably should have gone Oath of Kaya. That, that also works. Two. Two Cruel Celebrates. You see how this is torturing me?
Oh, nice. Very nice. Well played. Yep, gonna make it a 4 4. I'm gonna have to add next cruelty to it. Let's get the cruel celebrate out first so I can actually gain the life off of this at least. Yeah, that's all this does. Yep, I'm gonna be getting hit in the face with that. Go Gideon's company. Another Cruel Celebrant. Double Cruel Celebrant on the board is no joke. It really isn't. He could double block this. He's going to be doing bad things with the Gideon's company. He doesn't realize it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, blocking was the worst thing he could have done there. Champion of Dusk. So six, seven, eight. If he blocks with everything, he could potentially kill it. Hmm, I've got a fly flying around here and a Johnny's. Mine's bigger than yours. Yeah, I know where you're going. You're thinking the 4 4 that you're getting out of. I'm thinking of the 11 11 that I'm getting. Hold. I'll have enough to cast Gideon, so at least if nothing else, this will be the last game to say, hey, we actually got to cast Gideon this turn. Yep, 5-5. Five, five. You got it. Sure. <laughs> Let's see what Gideon can do for us. Try to get to the ultimate if I can. Oh, Aperture of Blood. How many vampires? Oh, he's got enough vampires. This could get nasty. All flying. And there goes Gideon's company. That's what Othakai is there for.
Come on. Come on. You're going to trigger that. So what can he do? He could kill my Ajani's with that Ajani's. No, I think I'm going to hold for one more turn. Yeah, every time he attacks me, he's giving me two life, which is going to now bump up my Gideon's Company and my Pride Mates. So this is going to be a, a dangerous situation for him. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going for on this. That's how I get to the ultimate real quick. We're just going to hold. Sure. I can get this ultimate off. I'm going to wipe out all of his creatures. Which would be really funny, by the way. Because I can quite literally do it next turn. What a way to win the game. He's debating it. Oh, he's waiting on me. I'm sorry, that's my turn. Oh, here we go. And we'll minus nine him, wipe out all of his creatures. Exile them. <laughs> I got his ultimate. I got a Planeswalker Dex ultimate to go off. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> I got a Planeswalker Dex ultimate to go off. That There's something to be said for that. That is an achievement in and of itself. <laughs> Wow, what a, like he had so many opportunities to win that game, but that was awesome. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, it always helps out the channel. I do really appreciate it. We're close to rapidly approaching um, 400 subscribers. There's also a uh, Patreon as well if you're so inclined. That is patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga. Ooh, we've got packs. Let's go ahead and let's open some packs. That deserves a pack opening. <laughs> To get the Planeswalker decks ultimate to go off, that deserves a three pack opening. Let's do that. I don't believe I just witnessed that. <laughs> Single combat, great card. Merchant got to re uh, review that, and that's his current artwork. Huge fan. The Elder Spell. And the final one. Oh, 
Unlocked a rare and Vivian. Okay, so that's going to do it. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And until next video, guys, we shall see you in the arena. This video was brought to you in no small part by our patrons. If you would like to help out the channel, go to www.patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga. And thank you for your support.